Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week we're gonna be taking a look at the Checkmate A1500 Mini. But of course, first, we're gonna to need to make ourselves a drink. So for this week's drink, we're gonna be making ourselves an apple cider mojito, the perfect fall drink. So we're gonna start by filling our glass with ice. Then we're gonna add the juice of one half lemon. Then we're gonna add two ounces of gold rum. And then we're gonna fill it to about three quarters of the glass with apple cider. Then we're gonna top it. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna top it with some seltzer water. Mine just exploded everywhere, so excuse the mess. All right, and we're gonna stir that together. And we're gonna garnish with some mint, a cinnamon stick, and a slice of apple. And there you have an apple cider mojito. Cheers. That's very good. That's a nice transitioning into the fall drink. All right, let's clean up this mess and take a look at these cases. <laughs> all right, so we've got everything all cleaned up and now we can go ahead and talk about uh, this week's subject, which is the Checkmate A1500 Mini, which is a case designed for a couple of different projects, uh, designed kind of to look like an Amiga 3000. It's from Steve Jones, who had previously brought everybody the uh, Checkmate A1500 Plus case, which is a more full-size case. This guy is a little bit smaller, and it's designed to either hold a, an un-Amiga, a Mr., a Raspberry Pi, or a mini ITX computer. So it's designed to hold those smaller form factor Amiga devices. And of course you can put anything you want in it, into it, uh, especially if you just put a PC in it and you can have it looking like your Amiga 3000 or at least inspired by the Amiga 3000. This guy is a full ITX form factor, but we're not gonna be talking about this guy today. I just wanted to kind of give a point of reference. Now, I've got actually two of these, and that is because I intend to use these for two different purposes. One is going to be used for the Unamiga, and then the other one, I'm going to put my Vampire. Uh, and there's a mounting kit, or at least there should be a mounting kit that came with it, and we'll see if that's in the box. Uh, I haven't opened these up yet or taken a look and seen what all came, because I know I had ordered things at different times. So we'll see if everything's all there. But uh, anyway, I'm, I plan to mount the Vampire in one and use the Unamiga in the other and have two new Amigas. So I guess let's just go ahead and get started unboxing these. Go ahead and open this up. And it looks like this is the on Amiga one, this is the beige one. So it looks like we've got our user manual and a mastering Amiga Amos. So it looks like that might be the OS that they kind of recommend using. We go ahead and take this out. And we've got a little bag of goodies here and the actual case there. I'm gonna actually pull these out. Come out, yeah. Let's hopefully get the case out. So there we can see the case size and you can see it's pretty small desktop form factor but not tiny and definitely substantial. And pull this plastic off of that. It looks like you can see the Unamiga port sitting out the back. And you can kind of see in through there the Unamiga board. I do have to supply my own power supply. So I should have a power supply that will work with this. Otherwise this video is gonna be real short. Let's take a look at what's in the accessory pack here. So it looks like we've got some drive bays that we can slot in if I want to put a floppy or a CD-ROM. 
uh, looks like a, Ooh, I don't know what that mount is. Some sort of card mount of some sort. Um, it does look like it has a little slot back there, so I'll kind of have to see what that's for. And then this bracket. These look to be mounts for different drive types. I'm sure our user manual here would shed some light on it. Ah, yeah. So here's all the different drive options, configuration differences, and ways in which we can set that up. Cool. So that's that for the beige one. Let's take a look at the black one. Whoa. Okay. So looks like we get our setup manual. And two different supply packs. Slide that off. So we can see that this one is black, has our drive base slot, and nothing in the back. Just the little power supply adapter. Looks like we probably get our case mounting stuff, and this hopefully should be... Ah! So these are all the extension cables for the Vampire to bring all its ports around to the back of, of the computer. So it looks like this faces the back and then these ports go in here for ethernet, USB and HDMI. And then that brings that around to the back of the case so that everything is nice and even along the back. So. That's awesome. Let's start uh, by putting together the Unamiga and then we'll do the Vampire. Okay, so for the Unamiga version, we just need to put this uh, power supply into the case and then we should be good to go to fire it up and see what's up with it. So we have two screws here on the back. Unscrew those. And unlike with the Plus, the Mini, slides right off. And there we have our Unamiga. So it looks like it needs a battery and we're gonna supply power to it. It's like our screws are in here and all of our front panel connectors. Looks like we've got a power switch, a power LED, and a hard drive LED. Looks like it has a micro SD already set up and I had it put Amiga OS 3 on it. Uh, so it should be already set up and configured and I should just be ready to go and Looks like it's using the Cyclone 4 core board Which is going to be the FPGA that's powering the Unamiga and This is the ITX board that's going to give us our breakout ports for the back which are giving us VGA uh, four USB ports and two joystick ports Looks like we've got a little beeper speaker here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put our battery in and put our power supply in. So it looks like we're gonna go ahead and put this little standoff here, which is also going to help hold our power supply up. We've got that set up. And then our power supply should just pop right in here. We've got that all screwed in, and I'm just going to plug this into the board. And I'm going to add a battery. So power switch goes to power button, hard drive LED goes to hard drive LED, 
and power LED goes to power LED. So that should be all that I need to do to get this to work. So we'll just take our cover and slide it back on. Cool. So that should be a working on Amiga and we will get that tested here in a minute. Now we've got our black case, put our black vampire in. It's the same deal. We're going to unscrew these two screws on the back and slide the tray off. So it looks like the way that this works is it has a circuit board here that's going to take the power from an S SFX power supply and make that work with the Vampire. And I actually do not have another SFX power supply, so I might have to just rig this with what I have currently and then come back later and put an SFX power supply in to make it work. Um, but I do want to hook these headers up. So we will want to run our power LED and our power switch. And I'm going to remove this tray so that we can install the vampire. Not that I probably need to remove this. I could probably do this without taking this tray out. But here I am. So the way they have you do this is to not actually remove it from the case for the vampire because that will void the warranty apparently. So you just unscrew the four screws of the vampire case. And normally you could just pop this off, but we're going to leave that connected and just set it in here and screw those screws right back in. Cool, nicely mounted, ethernet, plug that in. Do the USB here. And last we'll in our HDMI. Ta-da! <laughs> now we've got all the ports on the back. Install our little guy here. You can't get to one of the screws once it's put in. Oh boy. Okay. All right, I'm ridiculous. I couldn't bear it not having the proper power supply. So I went out and got one. So we're gonna put that in before we actually check out these machines. So this should just be this guy. This will go to here. And we're gonna mount that right here. Oh man, that just barely makes it. And that should be it. It just goes to here. Got our power supply with our power LED and our power switch. We don't have a hard drive LED for this. At least I don't have a header easily accessible for this setup, I, I don't believe. So we'll just leave that at that and go ahead and put the case back on. And 
Now let's get this set up and tested. Okay, so I've set up the Onamiga here with a actual CRT monitor. Uh, we're just gonna turn it on and check it out. Now the reason I went with the Onamiga is the Onamiga is basically the equivalent of uh, an Amiga 1200 or somewhere around there as far as performance. So it's gonna be kind of like having an Amiga 1200 without having to fight on eBay to get an Amiga 1200. I know that the Unamiga is running Minimig, which is the same core that runs on the Mister. So of course, if you have a Mister, you're gonna get performance probably pretty similar to this. I just like to have dedicated machines for dedicated purposes. I know it's wasteful, but uh, it's convenient for me the way I have it set up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're probably gonna get a little bit of flicker and hopefully it's not too terrible. Oh, there was a boot screen for a second, but it just went away. Looks like it's thinking. Ah, yes. Okay. So here we can see it says copyright 2019 Hyperion Entertainments. So this is the latest legit version of Amiga OS. Um, let's see if we can get a version number here. Now, I am terrible with the Amiga OS. I don't think it's very intuitive. There's too many spots for too many things, and uh, I, I get lost pretty easily here. But it looks like we have kind of like a dock down here at the bottom, and then some icons over here on the right side, maybe things that they think that we would most want to use. Um, we have this thing that confuses me, the RAM disk, which I don't quite understand what that's about. And then of course we get our workbench and our different drawers as they call them. So, uh, devs, expansion, icons, WB startup, storage, pref, system, tools, utilities, and programs. Let's go to programs. Audio, coding, demos, games, graphics, Macintosh. Okay. Audio, Eagle Player, oh, this looks like something. Let's see what else we have. Coding, I don't know anything about coding, so. Amos. Okay. So again, it switches our refresh rate. <laughs> it's a little better. Hmm. So just like the Mister, I just discovered that if you hit F12, we can load disk images. Oh, that's great. I did see that there was two SD card slots, so I can now pop an SD card in with different images. That's cool. All right, well, it doesn't help me in getting out of this thing though. There we go. Yes, okay. It's interesting that it has this newer, higher resolution graphical user interface, and then a lot of these programs are really old. Games. Looks like we've got WHD load, and then, oh wow. Looks like there is a ton of games. whole alphabet um wow that's impressive so there's a lot of stuff on here i can play i don't have a joystick plugged in right now so i might be terrible at games um actually hold on let me get a joystick and i'll be right back for whatever reason my joystick is not working i mean the button is but not 
the directions. So, all right, well, this game is unable to be played. Not sure why that's not working. Games, okay, so graphics. Looks like we've got a paint program here called P-Paint. Okay. Colantro Personal Paint, 1997. Okay, so that's what you would expect. And then the last is Macintosh. Okay, Shapeshifter. Start. Oh wow, it's got a full Mac OS emulator built in. Oh yeah, there it is. There's my... <laughs> it's weird because it feels like it's a lower resolution that's been scaled up, uh, probably within the Amiga OS. So my resolution here looks a little weird. So down here, it looks like we've got this Dopus, D-O-P-U-S, copy move. Oh, this might be kind of our utility. Let's show co. Oh, okay. So this says, my computer is an Amiga 1200. Uh, it's showing that it has a, a Motorola 68020 processor, but running at 56.8 megahertz. So it's a very fast 68020. And then I think this sysinfo is the thing that people use. Yeah, to like. So let's test our speed. Okay. So it shows all our Amigas over here. An A600, a 2000, a 1200, a 2500, a 3000, or a 4000. And it looks like we're in between a 3000 and a 4000 as far as speed. Well, that's cool. Well, I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but it was just kind of cool to look at the Unamiga and what it can do. Now let's go take a look over at the Vampire. Here we are on the Vampire V4 standalone. And I actually just did an update and the OS looks completely different than it did before. So this is running what they call Apollo OS. And um, it looks like, yeah, so if I go here to about, it shows that we are on the August 22nd, 2021 build. Um, but before it had like a start menu down here and now I'm not getting that. We just have our drives. So the Apollo OS drive and the stuff drive. It looks like also if we had our micro SD card installed, we could pull that up as a drive. So I'm curious if I run this AWeb, which is our web browser, if it's gonna get us a website. It does seem to be running very slow though. These were running way faster before I did this update. And I'm wondering this, if this is just a, a function of me just doing a fresh update and it's not quite done. Oh, okay. So that was just bouncing for that reason. Okay. So now it looks like it automatically turns the internet on. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, before I had to launch the internet and now it looks like it just launches on its own. So yeah, okay. So it looks like if I hover over the things, one click makes it bounce and a second click launches it. Yeah. Now, I'm not gonna have any audio because uh, one of the fun quirks of the Vampire is that it outputs its audio through its HDMI port. So if you plug it into a TV, it's great, but this is actually a computer monitor. It doesn't have any speakers. So unfortunately, that doesn't get me any audio. And I know there's devices you can get that can extract that audio so you can set speakers up, which I might do, or I might just get a monitor that has speakers built in. And it looks like we also have our command line, it's like a writing file. I wonder what this is. Oh, uh, looks like a movie player maybe? Let's just pick this at Doom's Gate. Okay. 
So it's showing that it has the power to play full video. I think they set it up so everything's on stuff. Yeah, 3D benchmarks emulators. So, oh wow, looks like it has an MSX, a Sinclair, ScumVM, and an Atari emulator? That's pretty neat. Let's see what games we've got. Zelda, that doesn't seem legit. This quest, okay. What do we get here? Oh, interesting. It's Navi. Real, oh, that's cool. All right, looks like I've got a, if I'm hearing a hi, hi, hi. <laughs> that's cool, I like that. All right, I think that about wraps it up for this supersized episode about the A1500 Mini. Uh, these are really neat cases. I really enjoy the design of them. I think they did a great job. My only complaint is that on the back side, there's so many ports that if you're not using them are just left open. And I would like it to have come with blanks or something to fill in the spaces on the back. That's really the only physical complaint I have about the cases. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun for me. I'll finally get to experiment and play around with the Amiga, be it uh, the Unamiga here or the Vampire V4 standalone. But overall, I think this kind of completes my Amiga journey. The only thing that I would, I mean, <laughs> as a collector, of course, nothing <laughs> is ever complete. Because um, <laughs> of course I would love to have one with a video toaster flyer because it's one of the earliest nonlinear editors and me as a video editor, I just, that sounds cool to me, but the prices are just so ridiculous on those systems that I don't think I'm ever gonna come across one of those. And an actual A1200 or A would be cool as well, just because it had that extra horsepower to run most of the games, but my Unamiga here should be able to handle most of that. So anyway, um, yeah. They're really cool. I really like them. I highly recommend the cases from Stephen Jones if you don't have them, or even if you just want something to, uh, as a desktop form factor. Uh, they're hard to find uh, decent desktop form factor cases. I think they're cool. Uh, maybe you'll think they're cool too, but uh, that does it for this episode. It's uh, super long and I'm amazed if you made it this far. So thanks and we'll see you next time.